What's going on guys? Gomers here and happy opening day to all who celebrate. Uh, well, I guess that's not exactly fair, even though we have a multitude of teams spanning from Baltimore to Washington that are being eliminated from the playoffs today. I guess everybody's happy baseball's back. Uh, the owners did not win, thankfully, and we've had a couple big games so far and a couple big announcements regarding supercharged cards, essentially inside edge on steroids. You know, it is wild and take Barry Bonds and put even more juice into him. It's really crazy we're going to talk about that and also the best cards you want to start investing in. Baseball's here, roster updates are coming, and you want to have a chance to make a bunch of stubs. So leave a like down below, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Let me know your team in the comment section. I want to see if we can hit at least one fan of every team in my fan base. I am sure, no doubt, we even have everybody is spending from a ton of Yankees fans maybe to like two Rays fans I know some of you guys are in the comment section so let's go ahead and get into this one very briefly I do want to talk about supercharged cards and how it really is going to affect a lot of things this year it was announced today you can see it well you probably have a pretty good guess that it's Bobby Witt Jr uh he had a first career hit in RBI with the eighth inning go ahead double on opening day and you see some juiced up stats. You see some lightning flaring on his card art right there. Plus 45 on contact and power, respectively, against righties. Obviously, that isn't added. I, I shouldn't have to say that, but I'm sure that's going to see in the comment section. Uh, Gomer, is that after the boost? Did he have zero power prior to them adding the supercharge onto him? No. That means he's going to have 90 if you do the math. And this is really crazy. You see how the market reflects. You cannot find this card on the market at all. It is impossible because people are just going to put it up for the sell now price, sell it for maximum. We've also seen that with the Cubs. They have Ian Happ and uh, the same case, a bronze card. He is not buyable currently and there is a fair amount of buy orders on him but it looks like they just made a change where you can actually put in an order on these guys right now so i'm actually gonna do that i actually can't do that so i'm going to just get my happy little ass in the queue right there the same thing for bobby witt jr so uh yeah there we go i'm Looking forward to getting some gameplay in with these guys tomorrow. So that is an investment in and of itself. Every team on opening day is going to get these. But after the fact, it's only for big moments. They don't have a guarantee like, oh, it's going to be like four per night or it's going to be 12 per week. Nothing of that sort. So that is something that is going to reflect a lot of the stuff that we talk about today. That being said, let's go into it. I have some gold to diamond picks. This is uh, some long-term investments, first and foremost, that I want to go over. Matt Chapman is one that I want to talk about. Again, investing is going to be a little bit different this year, so we're talking gold to diamonds. Um, but there's also incremental upgrades that are going to reflect stub value because it's not only based upon the quick sell value at 1,000. But Matt Chapman... You know, you have a guy right here who is a tremendous defender. He's been probably the guy at 3B for quite so many years, as far as the best defender goes. But he's had a little trouble hitting. He's never been a contact guy, but even on base, has been decreasing the last couple of years in Oakland. He's in a new place in Toronto. I don't think it's necessarily a more hitter-friendly ballpark. Granted that, you know, COVID doesn't hit again and they have to go back to Buffalo or, you know, Florida where it's a minor league ballpark, essentially. It's essentially like playing on blank canvas for some ball player grinding on MLB The Show. But I like Matt Chapman this year. Long-term investment. Again, I don't foresee this being one of the first few updates, but I do project that he's going to have a good year. And the thing with Diamond Dynasty investing, like a guy with Matt Chapman, if you have already that defense, it's a lot easier for you to get there. Alec Manoa, another Blue Jay that I really like for this year. He had a kick-ass 2021, and I project them to be... The top team in the American League East, yes. 
Hurts to say is a race fan, but I really like Alec Manoa this year, and I think as an 81 overall, again, another longer term investment. It's going to take some time, some stats to accumulate for SDS to go ahead and bump him up the plus four to that diamond rating, which the diamond is still a 5,000 stud baseline, no matter the overall 85 to 89. That's the quick sell value, so that is important to note. Another pitcher here, we're going to be looking at the San Francisco Giants, Logan Webb, I really like him this year, and something with him is he is the sinker cutter combo, so if he gets there, if he is on fire, you know, the first two, three months, he gets to diamond right away, then this guy is going to go for a substantial amount more than the quick sell value, because he would be good online, the sinker cutter combo is always great, and a lot of people like just postseason cards, so Logan Webb, I like how he projects, I think he's probably going to be maybe the ace of the staff. I like Carlos Rodon a lot too, but the Giants have a nice team. They have no diamonds in the game currently, but don't let that uh, reflect your thoughts on how they're going to do this year. Francisco Lindor. I think he's getting back up to diamond this year. I really do. He had a poor year. He started to turn it around at the tail end of 2021 a little bit. It wasn't prime Lindor, but you started to see you know, maybe things were just happening a bit unlucky. If you look at his uh, stat cast numbers, for example, you can see his projected stats were quite a bit higher and more so in tune with his career averages than what he actually produced. You know, look at his baseball card. You look at his batting average, his OPS. So I think he's going to do well this year, and I think he's going to get diamond within a couple of months. I really like the Mets this year, and spoiler alert, you're probably going to see a handful, a couple of Mets in this list. Sandy Alcantara, he is everybody's favorite dark horse candidate for Cy Young, which I guess in turn doesn't really make him a dark horse, but damn it, MLB, I think Network had him as like the 70th something ranked player blasphemous you know absolute tomfoolery going on at the at the network right there uh, but nothing new of course they rank tyler o'neill as like the eighth best left fielder when he's the best damn it but alcantara is part of the three-headed monster in that rotation in miami nobody goes to the games you know, so nobody's going to see this happen, but hopefully SDS is at least tuning in. Hopefully they have uh, MLB TV, so they're able to see what uh, Alcantara does this year. Some shorter-term investments now. Let's look at the Minnesota Twins, the newly acquired Carlos Correa. Bewilderment to me that he did not begin as a diamond. He is the best shortstop, a top two at worst in baseball, in my opinion. Fielding is honestly low. The hitting is low as Cray is underrated somehow, at least in terms of MLB The Show coming into the season. I think it'll literally take two good weeks or so coming into one or two updates, and he will get that threshold up to Diamond. I don't foresee it taking very long for him to get there, and you already see the gap there. That's not bad, 3,800. Uh, let's keep moving it along here. Um, Tyler O'Neill again, he is more than likely going to get their supercharged card today because he hit a three-run shot, which was great. Again, and a guy who, how the fuck is he a gold card to start off the year? Who knows? Uh, maybe Gomer should be doing the ratings over at SDS, but this supercharged card, by the way, is going to be nuts. I can't even foresee the stats are on there. I made sure to already buy one up. We're getting gameplay with them tomorrow, but uh, no chance. He doesn't go diamond very soon this year. Uh, obviously, not too much stubs to be made right now if you bought him, but uh, in the future, I do think that will decrease once the supercharge goes away because they're only on for about 48 hours. Brian Reynolds. How is he not diamond? I'm not sure. You tell me. Perhaps because he plays in Pittsburgh or maybe somewhere else. We'll see. Depends what the Pirates end up doing. But they did extend Cabrian Hayes, who unfortunately got injured today, which sucked to see. But Brian Reynolds, uh, very good. He's a good defender. He's quick. A good contact guy. And last year, he showed to hit for the most power out of his three-year career to this point. So I think he's a shoe-in. He only goes for 2100 This is, frankly, a steal. And I would certainly start stocking up on some of him because he is going to go diamond. It's just a matter of when, not if. Paul Goldschmidt. 
Had a good day. I think he walked like three times. So an on-base machine. Again, I'm looking forward to what he does this year. And I think he's a feature diamond. So I think he's a great investment. Goes for 3600 right now. Going to keep moving it along here because we have some golds to look at as well. Will Smith, not the one that slapped the shit out of Chris Rock the other night. You know, this one's got some hardware. He's got a ring, but he's not worrying about his wife fucking another guy. So... <laughs> um, this should be a pretty soon card as well. Uh, I think he's one of the best catchers in baseball. Defensively, maybe not as much. But offensively, he starts to turn it around a little bit more towards lefties. He'll get there very, very soon. But even hitting righties for a bit more contact, which I think he can do, is going to not take too much time. Long-term silver to gold investments, let's make it quick. Luis Garcia was runner-up in Rookie of the Year last year. I love him. I think he's going to project great. The Astros, they lost Correa, they lost Springer back-to-back -back years, but they still got a lot of young guys like him, like Framber Valdez, like Jose Urquidy. Another pitcher here, we're looking at Casey Mines for the Tigers, who I think the Tigers are going to be a team to watch. The AL Central, Torkelson, Bobby Witt, any of the White Sox, the Twins, and then the Guardians. They're, you know, they're there too. They have a new name, new logo. I guess that'll be fun to look at, unless you hate it. Uh, but Casey Mize, I think he's going to have a really good year. I think this is his breakout season. Was pretty good last year. Had, I think, about a three-war with the Tigers. And now that they look to compete... Maybe even for a wild card spot. I think that's going to bring some more heart into him as well. I love this pick. Brandon Nimmo goes for nothing. 240 by order. He needs two overall. He is going to get there so quick. Now that there's a more defined role for him, Conforto's out of the way. I think he's going to get a lot more reps, probably a full season. He's a great defender. He's quick and really a good batter as well. A couple back-to-back -back seasons with an over 800 OPS. I really like Brandon Nimmo this year. Another criminally undervalued player, Dylan Cease. 76 overall. I think he could contend for the best starter on this staff, and that's including Giolito and Lance Lynn. That is crazy to say, maybe, but he had a very good year last year. I think the K9 has a lot of room to grow, and I see him as a nice long-term investment, for sure. Giants, Mike Yastrzemski. 76 overall was great 2019-2020. Last year was just not his year. But I think it's another case of he didn't get quite as lucky as he needed to be. If he increases that batting average, because that certainly went down in 2021 compared to the prior two, he's going to get there. I really like him. I think the Giants are going to be good. I think they're going to contend for that NL West, which is tough when the Dodgers exist, but if they're going to do so, he's going to be a big reason. Some shorter-term investments. Looking at the Philadelphia Phillies, if I can find them. Ranger Suarez was great last year, I'll be honest. Kind of out of nowhere. I didn't see him coming, but... He was there, and I think he's going to be there again. He only needs one overall, and he was really good at limiting hits last year. Had a very fine whip, if I remember correctly, about a five-war guy. And I think now it looks like he's going to get more reps in as a traditional starting pitcher. He should be getting there rather quickly, looking at the Reds. A gutted roster, but Tyler Maley. I don't know if he's going to be a red all year, but for the time being, he is, and he's a great candidate to get upgraded. I don't know how he started out as a silver. He did not get upgraded last year. Tyler O'Neill is supercharged. So I like that one right there. Another Met, Chris Bassett, was great for the A's last year, and I think he's going to be really good for the Mets this year. Again, a 79 overall, right on the brink of getting there, and he's super cheap for a 79 overall. Again, I think 600 is the quick sell value. That's automatically a good gap. That's what you would see last year as a pretty good gap, and he will go for more. That's just the baseline quick sell, bare minimum. I see him down definitely is a guy that would shoot up more closer to the 1,000 mark. So Chris Bassett, I love that investment. Two more here. We're looking at a former Ray. Looking at Blake Snell over at the Padres last year. Dealt with injuries. Weird season. I think he writes the ship. He was starting to work on his walk rate, but then it deteriorated. But then it deteriorated last year. I think he's going to get back to maybe not Cy Young, Blake Snell, but a gold quality pitcher for sure. And again, only goes for 342. Sticking in the division, I like CJ Crone for the Rockies. If he 
If he improves that contact against righties even slightly by like five points that probably gets him there. He's playing in the cores, the thin air, the mile high air over there in Colorado. I think CJ Crone had a great year last year. Is going to keep up the offense and another great investment only going for about 400 stubs. So those are some short term. Those are some long term investments to look forward to. Make a bunch of stubs. What do you guys think? Who's going to get to diamond this year? Who's going to be the first diamond? Maybe we'll do a little giveaway, the first person who guesses it right. So leave a like if you guys enjoy, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Because it's out eight.